welcome students today we will discuss about 10 standard computer textual exercises and simultaneously we will have a quick revision of chapter 1 to 5 which will be based on the exercise the question mcq questions given at the end of the chapter so beginning with chapter 1 to display the web content which markup language is used very easy question we know that okay, which language we use to create web page and that is HTML. Which of the following is considered as a language for describing web page? Almost the same meaning that which language is used to describe web page content and that is again HTML. Question number three. Which of the following is the full form of HTML? Again most of you would be knowing that the full form of HTML is hypertext markup language. So these are the first three MCQ. Moving over to next MCQ, question number four. Which of the following is the full form of SGML? The full form of SGML is standardized general markup language. Now we need to understand what is SGML. So I have already created one web page for you where I have explained what is SGML? So as you can see here now, SGML that is standard generalized markup language is a standard for how to specify a document markup language or tag set. Such a specification is itself a document type definition. It is called DTD. But you need to remember one thing that SGML is not a programming language or it's not a web page language. It is not itself a document language, but it's a description of how to specify one particular HTML kind of language. So, SGML is a metadata. It is about data about data. So, remember, SGML is not used for programming anything, but SGML specifies, describes that how we can use other language to create web content. So, that is what SGML. Moving on to question number 5. Which of the following refers to an HTML element? You know that how do we write HTML element? So we write HTML element with an opening tag, then we write content and a closing tag. As you would be knowing, you can see here so many tags are here. For example, this HTML tag. So there is an opening tag then the content that is HTML and then closing tag. So that is what how we write HTML or how we refer to an HTML element. Moving over to question number six. Which of the following can be used to specify additional formatting with an HTML element? You know that with most of the HTML element, we can also specify some additional formatting which will describe that HTML tag in detail and will give some more meaning to that HTML tag. And that is what we call is attributes. For example, if you look here, then this meta tag has got this name as attribute, content as attribute. For this body tag, this BG color is an attribute the text is also an attribute. For this paragraph tag, this align is an attribute. So all these are called attributes. For IMG tag, this SRC is an attribute, height is an attribute, width is an attribute, alternate text is an attribute. So all these are attributes which tells web browser to do or to display that tag with some more meaning. Question number seven. Which of the following refers to a singular tag that do not require any content? So singular tag, you know that there are two types of tag, paired tag and unpaired tag or container tag and singular tag. So singular tag are those tag which do not have closing tag. So that is called empty tag. For example, as we have seen here, IMG. IMG is an empty tag. As you can see, there is IMG tag, but there is no slash IMG. But if we take the example of P tag, then P tag is a paired tag, container tag. It has P 
which ends with slash p. For example, head is again a paired tag where there is a head tag and then slash head tag. Title is also a paired tag where there is a title and slash title. But there are certain tags where there is no ending tag and that is called empty tag. One more example we will see HR tag and we say attribute color is equal to red. So this HR tag is also a unpaired tag or empty tag. There is nothing like slash HR. So that is empty tag. Question number eight. Which of the following attributes type can appear along with any tag? So which of the following attribute type? There are certain attributes which can appear with any tag and such attributes are called universal attributes. So there are some attributes which can appear with along with any tag and that is called universal attribute. Question number nine. Which type of information can be incorporated in an HTML document? That means what kind of information can be included in HTML document? So in HTML document, we have all of this kind of, in, all of this information, like we can have multimedia information, we can have textual information, we can have addresses and path of the file name also. So all of this can be a type of information which can be incorporated in an HTML document. Question number 10. Which of the following is an editor to edit an HTML document? Now remember, this is a special question where because textbook discusses about a Linux operating system and in Linux operating system to write HTML document, to create HTML document, we have to use an editor which comes with a Linux notepad which you might be practicing for writing or creating HTML document Notepad belongs to Windows and similarly there is an editor which belongs to Linux and that is called Cite, that is Scientific Text Editor. So Scientific Text Editor is the name of an editor to edit an HTML document on Linux operating system. So that is what chapter 1. Moving over to chapter 2. Which of the following form basic two sections of an HTML code? Which of the following form basic two sections of an HTML code? So which are the basic two sections of HTML code? You must be knowing it very well that it is head and body section. You know that every HTML file is divided into two sections and that is head section and body section. Question number two, chapter two. The meta tag in an HTML document are written in which of the following section? So like the meta tag in an HTML document are written in which of the following section? So meta tag is always written within head section. As we have seen here in this code, these meta tags are written within head section as you can see. And see what we can write in meta section or meta tag. Meta tag is used to write description, keywords, name of the author name, even at what interval your web page will refresh or the specified web page will refresh. So all these things can be specified using meta tag. So the most important meta tag is the keywords. Whatever you write in the keyword, that will help browser to locate your web page when somebody search on the keyword SSC or HTML, it will look for your web page to be listed. And refresh, HTTP equivalent refresh, is also very interesting and important meta tag where we specify that after every five seconds, your web page will get refreshed. So that is meta tag which is written in head section. Question number three, which of the following about a web page is described when a meta tag is used in HTML page. What can be described using meta tag? So just now we had seen that. We can describe author, purpose and keywords 
which belongs to our web page using meta tag so meta tag is used to describe author purpose of the web page and keywords which are which can be searched using uh, search box in the uh, google search bar all these things can be specified using meta tag moving over to question number 4 title of a web page is embedded embedded means is written within which of the following tag very simple and easy to answer question that the title of a web page is embedded within title and slash title tag again as you can see here here title and slash title and we have specified title here and the title is demo file that is what i had given you can give something else also question number five in which of the following sections can we add comments in html document now before we answer this you need to understand once again that what are comments comments are some additional information that tells that what we are doing in our document it has nothing to do with the output it is only for the reader who is reading your web document in notepad the code the html file code so those who are reading your html code if you want to specify some comments then it can be specified in html file using exclamation dash dash and it ends with dash dash so where it can be specified it can be specified both in head section as well as in body section so let us see that comments see this is comment which begins with exclamation dash dash and ends with dash dash this comment is written within head section as you can see it is written within head section and this comment is written within body section of web page but as you see the output of this page you will not see this line anywhere in the output and this line anywhere in the output because that is a comment line so if you look at the output there is nothing what we have written within comment so that is what comment is only for the readers information those who are reading your web page so that is comment then moving over to next question question number six which of the following is used to specify a color in html code so how do you specify color in html file wherever you are specifying some color there is one way that you write name of the color like color is equal to red color is equal to blue that is fine but using that method we can specify very few colors and computer is capable of displaying more than 60,000 colors so how to specify different colors so colors can be specified using color code hexadecimal hexadecimal color code now again you need to understand what is hexadecimal color code hexadecimal is a number system where there are 16 digits starting from 0 to 9 and then a b c d e f so if i want to specify color i have one method is i write like this background color is equal to cyan and text color is equal to hash 0, 0, 0, 0, f, f. it is a six digit color code where first two digit specifies the intensity of red color second two digit specifies the intensity of green color and last two digits specifies the intensity of blue color so rgb 00 means the lowest value possible and ff is the highest value possible so as you can see our output of the page is containing pure blue color text and background is cyan color if i change this to 00 ff 00 that is green color and if you see the output and if you refresh the output the things will change to green color let us again come back to here and make it blue only but no need that you specify only 0 and f you have choice of specifying everything in between 0 to 9 and a b c d e f but you need to remember 
that 0 is the smallest value and f is the highest value. So here again we have f9 which is bigger than all these two. 43 is smaller, b2 is even, even smaller but f9 is bigger than all these two values, set of values. It is always two, combination of two, two values. First two is for red color, second two is for green and this for blue. So what you can say is the output will be of somewhere within blue family. The color would be of blue family as you can see. Not pure blue but somewhere blue family. And if I change this value to suppose uh, this if I make it F C. Now green is having higher value than blue. So the output will have color which is in green family which is in green family as you can see and slowly slowly you will get white color black color also absence of all this color is black color as you can again make out here and presence of all this color makes it white color as you can see now so that is how we specify color using hexadecimal code you need to search and learn more about hexadecimal code color code you will enjoy it learning hexadecimal color code so let us now come back to the next question question number seven which of the following is used to set a visited link in html code so visited link can be specified using the attribute vlink generally we don't change this most of the website they don't change this thing color of the vis uh, visited link is brown active link is blue active link is bright blue and other is normal link is blue color but we never change this but if you want to change you can change using link a link and v link attributes which of the following next question question number eight which of the following is used to set an active link in html code so active link color can be changed using a link that is option a question number nine which of the following are two broad classes of formatting character in html so which are the two broad classes using which we can format characters in html so they are physical class and a logical class so using physical class and logical class we can format characters in html so that is question number nine moving over to chapter three question number one which of the following is used to insert a video file into an html document so how do you in incorporate multimedia file in your document so we can incorporate multimedia file in our document using href so href is hyper reference using which we can incorporate any file within our web page and it is used with anchor tag a tag question number two chapter three as the image element does not cause a line break it is also referred to as which of the following see when you write image or when you insert image using img tag it is it is not inserting a line break wherever you are writing img tag image will be inserted over that so that is called an inline image let us see one example of this inline image as you can see here in this example after this an image can be inserted using img tag and the image location can be specified using href attribute and then i have written this image again after the image there is one sentence that this is an inline image now when i come to the browser and see this as you can see this image though image is not being displayed there is one reason i have intentionally kept that option because we will be learning in next question how and what is the importance of this but as you can see here image is as an inline text like it is coming as the part of paragraph where the after attribute full stop 
image is there and then there is a sentence this is an inline image so that is how we incorporate image using inline image question number three which one of the following is a valid image file format so you know that which one of this following is image file format img is not an image file format img is a tag to insert image move to obviously is not an image file format mp3 you are very well knowing that mp3 is a sound audio file format compressed audio file format and the last is png that is portable network graphics is an image file format question number four chapter three which of the following is provided when we use alt attribute of an image now this is where i wanted to explain to you why that image was not coming and when what happens when image doesn't display on web page so we use alternative description which will be used as part of alt attribute and it will be displayed at the place of image when for any reason image is not being displayed here the image is not coming but instead of there is a text coming and that says my photo now let us see how we have written this if you see here image source is photo.jpg for any reason this photo.jpg is not available so what it displays is this thing alternate text my photo if i write here uh, missing photo missing or something like that it will show you that photo missing save this and come to the browser refresh it shows photo missing but it happens only when that particular image is not being displayed on screen actually i have one image intentionally have kept the name of the image here photo.jpg which is wrong there is no photo.jpg image if you see on the desktop i have a photo with the name bw close up so now let me change this name to photo i'm renaming it to photo and now coming here it is photo.jpg and going to the browser and then even without refreshing it came so as you can see if you see that flickering after certain time you see that page is flickering that is because of that code which we have written here this refresh five after every five seconds page gets refreshed moving over to next question question number five which of the following attributes specify the values of height and width of the image in pixels so while inserting image in your web page you have an option that you can resize that image by specifying height and width so that can be specified using the attributes height and width again as you can see in this code where i have inserted this image img src and you can see that i had given height and width these values are in pixels so height is 100 pixels and width is 75 pixels and because of that what we see in the output is this but if you feel that height is little more than what actually it should be as you can see that photographs is a little bit vertically stretched then you can change the value and let us make it 75 itself so that height and width both 75 come back here and refresh so this is how you can change the height and width of an image by specifying img tag and attributes like height and width next which of the following is not a valid image file format you know that there are many image file formats available so which of the following is not an image file format now let us discuss about the other image file format. like we start from option d gif is a very well known file format graphics interchange format bmp is a paintbrush file which is a, again very popular file format png is portable network graphics file which is again very popular image file format but there is no image file format like imv so the answer is imv moving over to next question question number seven which of the following concept is used to display whole image as a link 
So like when you create a, an image which you inserted and if you create that image as a link, what that concept is called? So that com concept is called as image as hotspot and how you can create image link? Suppose this image I want to create a link, this image, then I should write anchor tag before and after img so let's say here i write a href is equal to abc dot html which file is not existing but just i'm showing you that how you can create hotspot image so and then slash a if you go to the browser and refresh now this image is a link as you move your mouse on the image it becomes pointed hand and as you click on that it will try to find out abc dot html but that file is not available so that is how you can create image as link by writing anchor tag i am again removing this anchor tag it was just to show you that how we can create link so that is removed fine and yes now it is as it was and refreshing now the image is not hotspot now it's a normal image where you move your mouse and mouse remains pointer only not pointed hand next question which of the following are the two types of image maps so there are image maps you know the topic image map where you can create mapping on image so that different part of image works as different link so there are two types of image mapping one is the server side image mapping and another is client side image mapping next question which of the following tag is used to add an image map now if you want to create mapping image mapping then which of the following tag is used so we use map tag the map tag is used to create image mapping while working with image next chapter chapter number four which of the following is specified by ul in html now what ul tag is so ul tag is used to specify unordered list when you want to create an unordered list we use ul tag ul and slash ul next question which of the following is specified by ol in html ol is used to specify ordered list when you want to create ordered list we use ol tag and then finally third which of the following tag pairs identifies different items of a list so list items are specified using lin slash li let us see practically how we can create ordered list and unordered list so that you will again have that experience of creating ordered list and unordered list let us first we create unordered list we start unordered list and we complete <clears throat> unordered list and in between we write li sunday slash li li monday slash li li tuesday and slash li save this and come to the browser refresh it you will see that as you, can, you have observed, we don't need to refresh it because we have already given that refreshing rate after 5 seconds. So it automatically gets refreshed. As you can see, that image is flickering. So Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and these are the bullets. As you know, these bullets can be changed. So you may write type of the bullet. So type is equal to, if you say circle, type is equal to circle will create circled bullet and if you set type is equal to square it will create square bullet and the default is disk by default it shows you disk that is filled circle so these are the three types which we can specify using type attribute now we see let us convert this unordered list into ordered list so ol and slash ol rest of the things remains same but you now see the difference i'm not pressing refresh let us wait and see within five seconds it the page automatically got refreshed and as you can see now we have 
one, two, three, that is ordered list. And with ordered list, we have different attributes for changing the label for ordered list, that is the values type is equal to A. You will see the list with small abc. When you say type is equal to capital A, you will see the list with capital ABCD. When you say type is equal to small i, you will see small Roman numbers. And when you say type is equal to capital I, it will be with capital Roman numbers. And the default is type is equal to 1. That says 1, 2, 3. There is one more thing with order list and that is start. If you say start is equal to 11, the list will begin from 11 and not from 1. So that is 11, 12, 13. And if you say after saying start is equal to 11, if you say type is equal to capital A, now it will show you KLM because K is the 11th character of alphabet. And if you say small i, it will give you Roman numbers, small Roman numbers like XI, XII, X triple I. So that is ordered list and unordered list. Moving over to fourth question. Which of the following tag pairs are used to print list without bullets? So when you want to print a list without bullets, we use DT tag, that is definition term. So when you don't want any bullets or numbering, but just some definition and its terminologies, then we use DT tag. Question five, which of the following tag pairs are used to define a row of a table? So when you're creating table, table rows can be mentioned using trn slash tr tag. So trn slash tr implements table row. Question number six, which of the following attribute is used when a cell spans across more than one row? If the cell is spanning over more than one row, it is always row span. And if the cell is spanning across more than one columns, then it should be option A, that is cold span. So remember that row span and cold span. Moving on to question number seven. Which of the following is used to divide browser window into multiple parts? If you remember the topic, framed window, framed window. So following is used to divide browser window into multiple parts. So that is frame set. Using frame set, we can divide the windows browser windows into multiple part and then in each part we can display separate web page. Question number eight, which of the following is used to display an alternative content in case browser does not support frame? That is now not, not the question because nowadays every browser supports frame but still in case if you fill then there is a tag called no frame where you write the content and so that the visitor of the website will come to know that his or her browser is not supporting frame. So that is why he is not getting the web page properly. But remember, nowadays this is not a problem. Almost all the browser, latest browser, they support frame very well. So that is frame document. Question number nine. Which of the following can be changed in an ordered list in HTML? We already saw just now. In order list, what we can change? We can change all of this. We can change order of the item. We can change start number. And we can also change style of the number. So that is what can be changed using different attributes within OL tag. So there are two attributes, you know, the type and start. Using type and start, we can change the number style and start number. And by changing the list item, we can change order of the items. Question number 10. Which of the following is an optional entity in an HTML table? So in HTML table, what is optional? Caption of the table, heading of the table, grouping of columns of the table or all of this. So all these are optional. There is nothing compulsory in HTML table. It is not compulsory to give caption, not compulsory to give heading and even not compulsory to group different columns of the table. So that is 
the following all the three options are not compulsory while creating html table chapter 5 question number 1 which of the following type of package does calc refer to now calc you know calc is a software which comes with open office and it is same as microsoft excel so what type of package calc is it is a spreadsheet package question number 2 which of the following applications are not suitable for calc calc is a spreadsheet software so you can prepare balance sheet you can have result analysis you can present an idea about a product so all of the applications are suitable but presenting an idea about a product is more suitable this is a bit confusing question we can definitely prepare balance sheet using calc we can also have result analysis so the question itself in textbook is a little wrong the question should be which of the following applications are suitable for calc so all of this then it should come all of this question number three which of the following is the extension of worksheet created in calc so when you create calc file what will be the file extension when we create excel file you know that the extension is dot xlsx but when you create a spreadsheet file using calc the option the extension is ods open document spreadsheet it is open document spreadsheet ods question number four which of the following will be inserted in a worksheet if is equal to star calc team function is inserted in a cell so if we insert the function star calc team it will give you the photograph of calc developer team and their names question number five how can one calculate total of values entered in a worksheet in calc document so how we can do total so we can do total by manual entry by auto sum and using formula so all these three are possible so the answer is all of this last question of chapter 5 question number 6 it says that if we move a cell containing a formula having reference to another cell in the same worksheet or other worksheet maybe what will happen to the cell numbers used in formula so what it says that if you written a formula and if you move that from formula from that place to another place what will happen whether it will change the cell row and column number whether it will change only cell number or whether it will only change column number or nothing will be changed so the answer is nothing will be changed if you move nothing will be changed if you copy row and column addresses will automatically change let us see practically we'll open excel and we'll practice in excel see if you see here i have written three numbers 23 45 67 and here i had written formula is equal to sum a1 colon a3 now if i move this formula by dragging from its border to this place nothing changes if you see formula remains same so if you are moving the formula nothing will change but if you copy this formula from here to here then everything will be changed and if you drag now another option we'll see let's say first we bring it here and let me bring these three numbers near to this and now this formula if i drag here that is copy here then it automatically changes the row and column number whatever is required so is it was a1 to a3 it became b1 to b3 here it was a1 to a3 but as we copied it here it became b1 to b3 and so on if i copy here it becomes c1 to c3 and similarly if i copy here downward it will be b2 to b4 so if you are dragging your formula downward it will change row number and if you are dragging your formula across the spreadsheet horizontally it will change the column numbers so if you are dragging this formula here like this like this 
it is changing the column number here it is a then here it when you come it is b here it shows c and so on the column numbers are changing but if you drag this formula downward it changes row number here it is row number 1 2 3 b1 to b3 here it is b2 to b4 here it is b3 to b5 here it is b4 to b6 and so on so remember this that when you are dragging a formula it changes row and column number accordingly but when you are moving when you are moving it from one place to another place nothing will be changed and formula remains as it is if i move this formula you know that here there is a formula and if i move this formula from here to somewhere here nothing changes it remains sum a1 to a3 because we are just moving the content and the formula remains same but if you are dragging it it will change so that is what the last topic or the last question says which is very interesting thank you next lesson or next lecture we will see the mcqs of c language till then take care goodbye